Paracas History Museum with Senior Juan Navarro in Paracas on the coast of Peru. And this is where we find this fascinating ancient culture that existed between 1000 BC and about, died out about the time of Christ. And no academics are studying the physical abnormalities of these ancient people. And I think honestly it's because they're afraid to. Because what I'm going to tell you, number one, the Paracas did not originate on the coast of Peru. They did not originate in Peru. This is from genetic DNA studies. And number two, they were not homo sapiens sapiens. So let me go through the procedure here. So we look at this skull. And you can see, obviously, it's kind of conehead looking. And it's missing what is called the sagittal suture. So that's the suture line that goes from here backwards, which all normal human beings have. So if we look at, at this one, so you see the suture line coming across this way, and then this one coming back this way. So that's what a normal human skull looks like. It has these two sutures in the shape of a T. But in the case of this one, it has another suture coming down the forehead, which again is a genetic anomaly. And when we look at, again, the, the shape of the skull, again, you can see it's curved in the back, and it's, it's curved in the front as well. And so this was about an eight-year-old individual who died and does not have the sagittal suture whatsoever. So this is an example of a natural elongated skull. The first Paracas had natural elongated skulls. They were born that way. And then over the course of time, they would start to mate with normal looking people. And that's when the process of cranial deformation, like the flattening of the head here in the back, began. So you had natural to begin with, and then as these people began to breed with normal people, then the skull began to shrink in size and it started to look normal. And so that's why the cranial deformation process began, to bind the skull of a baby, to change the shape, and by three years, the bone was completely set and that would be the shape of the skull until the people died. And then, at the latter end of the Paracas culture, you have actually this shape right here. So you have flattening in the back of the skull, flattening of the forehead. So this would be at the very end of the Paracas time period. And what we're starting to learn now too is that the famous Nazca culture, where people who moved in from the north, just the north of here, moved in and then took over this culture and caused genocide to the nobility, and it was only the nobility who had the elongated skulls, not the common people. The common people were just regular human, but you find that all over in different parts of the world where you find elongated skulls or cranial deformation. Only the nobility had the larger shape um, elongated skull to differentiate them from the common people. And so in terms of the genetics, all Native American people of this area whose ancestors crossed the Bering Land Bridge and standard acad academia says that was basically all Native American people were of um, papillal groups on the mother's side A, B, C, or D. That's it. But in the case of this baby that died about at about 18 months old, 2,000 years ago, its maternal DNA is U2E1. And the most common place you find that is in Crimea, which is in the Black Sea. Then this one, and these three were found in the same cemetery, or the same tomb. So this one was U2E, which again is not Native American. It's also from Crimea. And then this one as well, this is H, H1 and H. Those are the two different um, Two different laboratories um, did the analysis, and once again, most commonly, that's found in the Crimea Black Sea area. So we're talking about the possibility 
that these people originally came from the Black Sea and somehow uh, found their way on the coast of Peru. And then later on what happened, when you get into the ones that are obviously cranially deformed, you see these two at the Ica Museum, which are cranially deformed skulls, the maternal DNA is B4 and B4. So that is conforms with conventional uh, Native American DNA. So that means that there was much more Native American DNA over the course of hundreds of years than the original people who were these anomalous ones with natural elongated skulls. And also in terms of uh, blood type, all Native American people of Native American ancestry from at least Mexico down to the southern tip of um, South America, 100% blood type O. I even looked it up an hour ago just to make sure, and that's what it says. But a study was done of 14 different blood samples from the Paracas time period. And in the case of, of this study, 28.5% blood type A, 7.1% blood type B, 21.4% AB, and only 43% blood type O. So that again means a very complex uh, genetic makeup of more than 50% non-Native American DNA and we're talking 3,000 years ago. So this is more, much more than, it's about 1,500 years before the arrival of the Spanish on the coast of, of Peru who were supposed to be the first non-Native American people in Peru. Um, and as we look at the textiles, you see how complex the textiles are. Uh, some of the finest textiles in all of the Americas were created here on the coast of Peru by people who had almost no resources whatsoever. So that's another anomaly, is where would you have developed this skill? And um, also brain surgery. They, did, they performed brain surgery between 2,000 and 3,000 years ago and more than 50% of the surgeries, as shown here, were successful. So how is that possible? How would you, how would you have that ability to perform brain surgery with such a high success rate uh, is another one of the anomalies of these, uh, of these ancient people. is almost perfectly preserved, mummified. And again, look at the hair. The hair is red, it's naturally red. When that person was alive, they had red hair. That is not a Native American characteristic. So that genetically shows that, um, again, non-Native American aspects to that person. Also the form and magnum. So you see the form and magnum, that's where that top of that uh, plastic is inserted into the skull. The foramen magnum is where your vertebral column enters your skull, and it's a full one inch back from where it should be. So that is a genetic, again, another genetic characteristic, and that by itself, according to doctors and chiropractors who have looked at them, say that by itself shows that these were not homo sapiens sapiens. They have to, at a minimum, be a subspecies. So possibly Homo sapiens paractus is what is who these people were. Close enough to us to be able to breed, but not the same species. So what you're looking at is a normal human baby <clears throat> that probably died between one year and 15 months old because we can tell because the fontanelle, which is that hole you see, it hasn't fully closed. Now in comparison, go down to the skull that's below that. And you can see that um, that's not some kind of disease. It's very likely that this is not a human skull at all. At least not Homo sapiens sapiens. This was found in a side valley near Paracas, Peru, about three to four years ago, and it will be a candidate for DNA testing in the future. But some people who have any doctor that's looked at this has no idea what they're looking at. They say, I, I didn't study that in medical school. So it could be that we're looking at either a subspecies of human or possibly even a human something else 
hybrid.